Hi ho, silver! Oh, wait, uh, whatever. Under the dome, where the people are trapped. Under the dome, the situation is crap. Under the dome. Were you defined until the end? All that and more on this piece of slice. All the news from every dark corner of the universe. Slice of Sci-Fi.com And greetings, everyone, to another slice of sci-fi <laughs> after that musical interlude. <laughs> I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Ben Raginton. I am Ginny Koch. I'm Keith Lane. And I'm Megan Zier. Awesome. Let's get to some news. Okay. Your news team is next. Well, Pacific Rim may have gotten a late start on the (laughs) pre-opening buzz, but the reports from the recent screenings not only played up the wow factor, Mm -hmm. but apparently uh, from celebrities like Kanye West and geek heroes like Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sure. It sounds good. I think you're close. Sounds good. Yeah. Close Um, enough. Anyway, uh, they they tweeted that Pacific Rim was one of, easily, one of their favorite movies of all time. So that's something really, really exciting. Because I know that uh, Mike and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was just some uh, sneak previews that were being bandied about about a month ago. And they were kind of lukewarm. But uh, I guess Guillermo kind of went to the studio maybe tighten things up and now everybody's just going going nuts about it. It looks fantastic. The extended trailer that just came out um, that's available, I was watching on Apple TV just yesterday and it's like, wow. I mean, they really ramped this thing up. I mean, it's it's the, the action, every part of this is so ratcheted up and I love the fact that, I mean, it is the kaiju that's the kaiju, mm-hmm. that's, kaiju. kaiju kaiju that's actually in there. Um, it, it's it's awesome. I mean, they really have just taken pages out of the manga and thrown it up on the screen. And it's as long as they stick with that, it's going to be fantastic. Well, this is this is this is exciting. Now, our very own Summer Brooks, she saw a preview earlier this week, and she thinks it easily beat out the first Transformers in Ooh. terms of both robot action and story. Now, the first I Transformers film. I loved that. I love that I first love film. I thought it was really solid. So that's a that's a pretty strong endorsement. I'm kind of excited about that. And I'm sure that she'll be watching it again several times this weekend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Pacific Rim, if you don't know, it focuses on a global military unit of giant robots called Jaegers designed to be piloted by a pair of human fighters whose minds and memories meshed together to be able to handle the power needed in order to drive these massive machines. These robots and their pilots are the last line of defense between humanity and wave after wave of relentless alien creatures who are coming out of the ocean who are bound and determined to Mm -hmm. wipe us out. Absolutely. So, and the great thing is is that we actually have a really cool trailer. Oh, by all means. Let's Let's play that. Let's look at it. We always thought alien life would come from the stars, but it came from deep beneath the Pacific Ocean. Tens of thousands of lives were lost. Things have changed. We're not an army anymore. We're the resistance. To fight monsters, we created monsters of our own. Two pilots, mind melding with the body of a giant machine. We have chosen not only to believe in ourselves, but in each other. Today we face the monsters that are at our door. Today we are canceling the apocalypse. But it is pretty cool. Pacific Rim in real D3D and IMAX 3D July 12th. Rated PG-13. And it wow. just oh my looks God, I can't wait. fantastic. That and was amazing. I, 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 I love the fact cannot, that cannot wait. I love the fact that we got Hellboy in there. Yay. I mean, I, it's just yeah. Yeah. It's, Del, everything Perlman. it's Del Toro. Yeah. Perlman has mm-hmm. to be in there. I mean, uh, the cast is fantastic. The concept is fantastic. Everything about this movie just looks. It just smells of of awesome. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. Guillermo and the writers they had a very clear vision mm-hmm. as to what makes a good kaiju movie right Mm -hmm. and they pulled out all the stops on this because every bit that i saw in that trailer was just spot on and 
a perfect homage to everything mm. that I grew up watching. Absolutely. I'm very excited Cannot about wait. it. So Disney was having a good summer with the, with the success of Iron Man 3 and Monsters University. Mm -hmm. However, it looks like House of Mouse may need to um, bail out um, the Lone Ranger help me with a little bit of money help from Tony Stark. Because uh, the reports indicate that Disney could lose, and this really hurts, Ooh. as much as $150 million on this film. Now, it only mm -hmm. took in half of what analysts had predicted that it would make over the 4th of July weekend. And while actor Johnny Depp is enormously popular in the overseas markets, uh, in Westerns, he traditionally didn't really fare all that well. Hmm. This puts the film to be, and now this this kills me, what I'm, what I'm about to say here. This puts the film on track to be the biggest money loser for Disney since John Carter, and that was a movie wow. that I loved. I, I thought John Carter was a great film. I, I, I mean, John, John Carter wasn't that bad. I, I loved John I Carter. Really, they, I really, really liked The Lone Ranger. Yeah. I saw it. I liked it. I think I gave it an A minus uh, on I, Slice on people, my review. The people that Everyone are watching I know that's it, seeing it, loving it, uh, is loving it. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. mean, the critics are panning it like crazy. But again, when do we listen to critics? Well, I mean, I, I they're always that, wrong. The big issue is if you don't, if you're if you're tired of Depp's what I call his Captain Jack mode, you will be tired of that in this film. And if you really hold the Lone Ranger as precious, as in you can't handle a retelling you're going to have a problem with it. Other than that, I think, honestly, the biggest problem is that it's PG-13. It is incredibly yeah. violent. It's really, I'm huge, I love Westerns, and uh, not everybody knows that about me, but I'm huge into Westerns. It really does the Western aspect very well, and it's brought in all the uh, brutality, that a lot of the brutality that was in the West. But it's PG-13, and you're, it's up against Monsters University and mm. Despicable Me, on the in the summer when yeah, families yeah. That's are bad going competition. and Despicable let's, Me was awesome. Let's see so. what it does the rest of the, the right. rest of the I, month I here think, before I we think, start mm -hmm. jumping all over. Right. Well, you know, a friend of mine works at the AMC where they serve people, and he said that their theater that the the showings for for um, Lone Ranger are packed, and everybody's loving it. He said, and every other theater apparently not. But gosh, <laughs> if you want to see it, AMC fourteen. <laughs> mm. You know, it's like some of the some of the showings are packed and some are not. Well, Lone Ranger's disappointing results are being watched by Hollywood and by Disney. Now, there have also uh, been reports that the film's failure could jeopardize a new parts of the Caribbean project that would reunite Johnny Depp with director Gore Verbinski and producer Jerry Buckheimer. Now, this ripple effect could also keep Hollywood studios from gambling on other big budget flicks that's like The sad. Ranger in the future. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. that, that's sort of a sad thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Because they have to take chances, you got to take risks on some mm -hmm. of these films, and 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 we don't know. We you know really this is it, it's too early that they're right. they're jumping all over this. I think could yeah. enjoy a big popular success in the in the video home Absolutely. video market. Right. And Absolutely, and I think I think Jeannie hit it on the head. It's up against two really two big really kids good movies. kids, very films. Yeah. big kids, very films. family oriented movies. Just, if I was making a choice with younger children, I would absolutely go right. to Despicable Me versus The Lone Ranger right. because there's nothing I have to hide my kids' eyes yeah. from. Exactly. Whereas Despicable Avengers Me. didn't have to go up against that. Exactly, correct. It didn't. Or and, I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, exactly. Other PG thirteen type movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also Avengers is it's just a different vibe. This is definitely yeah. you need mm -hmm. the family market. I mean, and it says Disney, so you are expecting mm -hmm. as a parent yeah. a different film than you're getting. Yeah. But All I right. loved it. Well, let's take a little quick break here. I think it's time for some flight test land. News from flight test land. Good evening, Slicer. Sean Merritt with your news from flight test land. SpaceX. SpaceX, grab, take the pebble from my hand, grasshopper. That's right, SpaceX had another successful flight of its grasshopper flight test, v, flight test rocket. And here we see, there it goes, starting the launch. This thing is very cool just to watch fly, I have to admit. The launch took it to a final altitude of 325 meters, approximately 1,000 feet above sea level. Here she comes up. It, it's crazy to watch this because if you ever watch real lock, normal rocket launches, they take off much faster than this. This is actually a very low speed launch. You see the landing gear there. You can see the uh, rocket burning away nicely. And just look how nicely it just holds itself there. This is all being taken with um, video being taken from a helicopter standing there. And there she goes. She's going back in for the landing, throttling down. Now this is a very important test because this is leading up to their eventual launch of a fully reusable first stage for the Falcon 9 law, for the Falcon 9 booster. <clears throat> Here she comes. 
Yeah, the new navigation system ensures precision landing. Reportedly, it came within two meters of the original launch site. And there she is. Engine is down. And if you listen real carefully, you can hear a lot of SpaceX engineers going, Yay! But it's testing, actually, the, ro the landing rockets there. And very cool. SpaceX, way to go. Sean from Edwards out. Here's what's happening. And very cool stuff there. I, it's beautiful, that oh, rocket that launch. Nice. Incredible. I'm just Gorgeous. amazed at the to science. Come right back down in the exactly. same that's, spot. That's, no. that's amazing. That's the practical applications are going to be great. I can't yeah. wait. SpaceX is just phenomenal stuff. Yeah. That's why I, I rave over it so much. And if Sean didn't send it in, I would never see it, so it makes me so happy. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Well, author Stephen King says he likes what producer Brian K. Vaughn is doing with the TV version of Under the Dome. He I certainly hope oh, you're watching it. K. Vaughn, you're awesome. That is phenomenal. I, it's got me riveted, I have to say. Now, on his website, the best-selling author wrote that some of the changes and tweaks to the story were necessary to translate the novel into a television series. Well, of course it would have to be. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, that it will run 13 episodes, and it could run more if the ratings warrant it. Okay. You have to wait and see on that one. Now, that's such a... Rem uh, that such a reimagining had to take place was my was, it was uh, Stephen King's only concern, and he said that when the series was still in the planning stages, that concern was purely practical. If the solution to the mystery were the same on TV as the book, everyone would know it in short order, mm -hmm. which would spoil a lot of the fun. Besides, plenty of readers didn't like my solution anyway. So <laughs> Stephen King, and to be honest, I've heard it. I I've oh actually my read God. it. I, I read what his original solution, what the answer was. Mm. I didn't like it. Yeah. No. So, so he's letting them actually run with it, and it's, it's going to have a completely new new life. And I love the fact. I, I love the character development. I love the characters. Mm -hmm. I I like. I like the fact that they're not afraid to kill people um, oh. like immediately. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's like holy crap. Really, it's like wow. We're offing people in the first freaking episode. Oh, you mean the producers? Yeah, I thought you meant the people under the dome. I'm like, no, that's scary. They shouldn't be killing people. <laughs> no, I mean the producers. Right, the fact right. that they yeah, would actually kill cast members. Show. No, no. Oh, safe. I know. Oh my gosh. When the one character died, who I'm not going to say, yeah, yeah, we, I was no, like, no spoilers. holy moly. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, the one. Take you know, your pick. You know, the one. The one that died? Yeah, yeah that one? one. That guy. <laughs> that one. Okay. Well, King went on to say that the only thing that had to be the same was, of course, the starting point mm -hmm. of the dome trapping the small town. Well, duh. It's best to think of the novel as, as to what you're seeing week to week on CBS as a case of fraternal twins both started <laughs> the same creative womb but you'll be able to tell them apart in very short order mm -hmm. or if you're of a sci-fi bent think of them as alternate versions of the same reality mirror mirror mm. so one dome's got a beard the other one doesn't well i like the, I, I, what i love about it is that it's not a such a well-known um piece of of uh, stephen king's property no, it right. that right. people aren't freaking out about it because it's different yeah. and and like he said a lot of people didn't like his solution anyway so this has a lot of opportunity for them to come in and say okay let's take the concept and run with it and make it better i just so, hope that they actually have come up with some sort of a, an actual solution as to well you're what is going on they said yeah. that they will actually reveal what the dome is in the first season well i so, think that we're still maybe kind of going with the idea that perhaps they were going to go with steven's original original concept Ooh, well, but I if hope they're not. not going with his original concept it might be something entirely different that maybe they haven't figured out yet because there's still talk of this show coming back for another year. And if that's the mm -hmm. case, you you can't exactly solve the situation that quickly. You well, could solve it if it's an if it's an if it's a, it's a problem that's gonna take you another season or more to, solve to, it? to fix. You might know what it is. But yeah, then, and then but you then it's, like, remedy I know, it. it's like I know it's cancer, but it's going to take me all this treatment right. to get rid of cancer. I could accept mm -hmm. that. So yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you know we we should probably do a little bit of voicemail, huh? Oh, okay. Let's, let's do some of that. Hi, slicers. Web Genie here. Another TV recommendation. This time for a little genre-based show called Reviews on the Run. It's Canadian, but I believe it's now down in the states as well. Or you can watch it off of their website. Reviews on the Run does exactly what it says. It reviews games, tech, and movies. It's fast-paced and fun. I'm a sucker for quick-witted chat about tech stuff, so I will often sit through the reviews of console games I'm never going to purchase, just so I know what's going on. Oh, and their video editing is often quite hilarious. Their editors pick the most sarcastic clips to illustrate what the reviewers are chatting about. 
The movie and Blu-ray reviews are often genre-based, so I feel it closes the circle. I listen to Slice to hear about what's coming up in movies, and reviews to hear about the release. Last night, it was a look at the Blu-ray release of Warm Bodies. Anyhow, check it out. Reviews on the run. Very cool. Oh, that That's sounds cool. rather interesting. Yeah, yeah it does. Neat. So uh, last week, or th- uh, when we were off last week, but the week before, we actually started this little uh, geek uh, versus nerd debate oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. that. We had some comments on that. Did we? Yeah. I'm really surprised by that. I can't imagine why them, anybody would want to comment on that. Call them the nerds. So anyway, we... Uh, just <laughs> what are you calling them? Nerds. Gnerds. Gnerds? Well, hang on. You're, you're getting ahead of it. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Keith is psychic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm psycho, yes. I can read Blitzers, Lurk in Chicago here. Regarding the recent needlessly divisive <laughs> needlessly, <and> ongoing yes. <laughs> debate about geek versus nerd. Needfully, needfully. I offer no, simply needless. the following. <laughs> I will not make any deals with you. I resigned. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. <laughs> Thank you, like Patrick. There you go. <laughs> well, I think that says it all. I think so, too. I am not a number. There you go. I am not yeah. a number. You know, y'all are very negative about labeling. I like labeling. It's like my favorite <laughs> thing to do. You get to label it, and you get to put it in a box. And then when you but decide that I, it isn't that thing, you get to take it out of that box, like, put it in another box, put it someplace I else. I just have a awesome. problem with you yourself. And no, that's sorry, right. But, thank yeah. you. No, I, I, my only issue is I don't like the idea of setting up two camps of labels versus the other. I like it if it's like a friendly thing. Like I went to U of A and I totally rag on ASU, ASU people all right. the time. Yeah, well, it's what, fun. If it's friendly. It, and what ASU was it that rags you came back. up with? Huh? You said we've left somebody out of the the mix. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, Plus the dweebs, dweebs. We, we left dweebs oh. out. We left spazzes out. We left dorks out. Uh, oh god. I I am not gonna. I, add do we in. need the dweebs yeah, and the I'm spazzes not, yeah. and the dorks? I don't know. I'm yeah. kind of a dork. I mean, I, if somebody like well, comes no. back with what I dork really means, I know the definition of dork. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about the slang. All right. Yeah. I'm kind of a dork. Okay. Hello, Slicer Super Scotty from Candy here on a beautiful Canadian summer's night. Happy 4th of July and happy Canada Day. I just got back from a uh, viewing of the Lone Ranger. And I must say, if you liked at least one of the Pirates of the Caribbean's film, you should at least enjoy this film. Definite popcorn, uh, thriller, go see it, recommended. Yeah, see, absolutely. those of us seeing it love this movie. Yeah. It's really enjoyable. It's a fun movie. I, I really, really recommend it. I, I, I'm hearing a lot of good about it, and except from the critics who are all panning it. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think they're affecting people, especially when you're in a down economy. You're you are you start mm-hmm. relying on critics to make a determination mm-hmm. of where you should spend your money. And again, I just think the the one the misfire I see with Disney on this is that it's PG-13 and it earns it for violence. Yeah. and you put a Disney film. With that much violence, and I don't, I don't recall the pirates movies having the level of violence. Not that, like that. Really? That Lone Ranger has. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Um, there, I, I don't want to do a spoiler, so right. I'll, I'll go on. But it's violent, <laughs> but good. Hey, Slicers, this is Trampus with a review of the Lone Ranger. Uh, I took my mom to see this, and my mom was a fan of the Lone Ranger since the old radio serial, <laughs> so uh, I was kind of curious on her reaction. She said it was, and I quote, a hoot. Johnny <laughs> Depp does, of course, steal the show as Tonto. It's kind of weird seeing Tonto with higher billing than the Lone Ranger, but yes. uh, he deserved. very much makes the movie, and it's wholly enjoyable. Um I will say that Army Hammer as uh, the Lone Ranger, eh, I'm not totally sold on that. Got a rocket name, uh, though. He's delicious. The movie was a little disjointed in places and uh, had some camp, but it was a lot of fun. If you go and expect a popcorn movie, you'll enjoy this. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's actually true to the uh, original series, too. Mm-hmm. From what I remember, yeah. you know, the Lone Ranger was the guy that always got the got the kudos, mm-hmm. but it was really Tonto that was there basically <laughs> saving his butt. Yes. It worked out the same way in the Green Hornet. Yes. And if, if you ever watched Rustler's Rhapsody, that is like the ultimate movie that basically pans all of this in the entire genre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, just to act like anything coming out of old-time radio is some, you know, some deep, meaningful 
classic. Those were <laughs> that was Wait pulp for your ears. That was pulp. Okay, it was pulp entertainment, and that's it was what for it was supposed day. to be. Yeah. It, 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 it definitely was for his day, and it still is if you listen to it now. Yeah. And um, you know, so acting like you couldn't make an update of this because it's just so classic. If they can update Shakespeare, and they do. Please don't ask me about much ado about nothing. Mm-hmm. Let, let's let's um, update Doctor Demento yeah. then. Right? Yeah, we could update Doctor Demento. Okay, <laughs> okay, you could. I don't know why okay. you'd want to. I don't know why you'd want to, but right. you could. All right, <laughs> all right. One last thing on the geeks versus nerds thing here, and then we'll move on to something else. Hey, this is Sam. I'm just calling in to let you know on the, the geek uh, versus nerd situation. Uh, I'm taking the side that I am a GERD. <laughs> okay. Or I'm a neat. <laughs> or a neat. A neat. God a bless you, sir. There you go. A neat. A neat. I like a neat. I like the neat. I like a neat. I could be a neat. We are the knights who say neat. There you go. <laughs> it had to be said. Awesome. Okay. Well, talking about awesomeness. Well, we've got to talk about. We got to talk about defiance before we go Absolutely. into uh, yes. with defiance moving ahead for season two. Sci-fi and game creator Try and Worlds announced a new contest. Like they all, they already had one, so now they're already <laughs> announcing a second one, and it's to bring a gamer into the TV world of defiance, which I think mm-hmm. we sort of sort of started talking about. Yes. Yes. Uh, play the game. Join the show. Is an game. Is an in-game contest, that's a mouthful, that pits <laughs> players against the Arc Fall events to see who can become the ultimate Arc Hunter. Mm-hmm. The winner will appear in the show during Season 2. Now, between July 8th and July 30th, 10 Arc Hunters are going to compete uh, for the most major Arc Fall events. And they'll be competing against each other for a chance to have their character written into the show. So now, we had talked about this mm-hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. And this in this case, yeah. it's their character. Mm-hmm. Nice. That, I think that's important. That makes sense. It's the avatar that right. they create. That avatar. Yeah. Which I would sense. be way more excited about than me being on the show, personally. There's a serious yeah. nerd cred on that yeah. one, I think. Yeah. Defiance fans on Facebook will get a chance to choose their five favorites, and a member of the Defiance team will pick a winner from those five finalists. Wow. Totally cool. Wow. More details about rules and game, cl- game play can be found at www.defiance.com, and good luck to all the gamers who participate. And I tell you what, that's really your only options at this point, is you're going to have to play the game because uh, the, the show's uh, not going to be back for a year. A year. A, a year. freaking year. We've what got a year hell? of, uh, oh my God. God, what just happened? Who's uh-huh. alive? Who's dead? I, I know. don't know. Uh-huh. And Warehouse 13. Exactly. Same thing. It's like, what are they doing to what us? What the heck is going on That here? is killing me. I, I don't know. I, you're going to come back in a year. That's what they're doing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in such like a deep depression right now, you guys. I'm I know. Like, oh. If it weren't for Under you. the Dome, I'd be a mess. I know. Thank God I found that show. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I tell you what, um, we're running kind of close on time here, but I did want to actually get this uh, week's uh, uh, Skywatch in because it's kind of an important one, kids. So pay attention. Good morning, folks. Most have heard about the train crash disaster in Canada. Here's a before and after shot at nighttime for comparison. Flooding records are dwarfing heat and cold records, which themselves aren't as spread as global warming propaganda would have you believe. But those of us in the Western world are seeing nothing like this. Worst of the worst weather seems to be hitting the developing world. Coming to the USGS, no major quaking yesterday, but Chile and the Pacific Rise were active, along with the area just north of New Zealand. Top RSOE story today is a spike in cesium in the groundwater below and around the Fukushima catastrophe. Salt Lake in the West Pacific, now a major typhoon and may nudge super typhoon status today. Models are bringing it further and further south. Similar storm conditions in the Atlantic, just much weaker. Chantal expected to come up and dive west into the U.S. coastline once it makes its way north of the Caribbean. There is a huge high-pressure cell blocking the entire Atlantic. And as always, spinning clockwise in the north, the southern edge is driving west. Both those factors scream that a left turn is coming, and residents of the coastline better be ready. Imagine five dudes in an office looking out the window, baffled at the amount of rain coming down. That was me and my co-workers yesterday, and I'd better be ready for more tonight. There's that spin clockwise. Must be another high pushing outward. And it looks like the counterclockwise low sucking in is just north of the border. This is quite the new normal pattern. Higher highs, lower lows, and a strong southward swinging convergence tail that forces equilibrium between air masses that have nothing in common. I believe tonight we could even see tornado outbreaks, so please, be watchful. 
Solar Wind, we were wondering if the Corona Hole stream missed us as we waited for the CME impact. You see simultaneous spikes in the speed and density, that's the yellow and the orange, indicating a CME impact and that the Corona Hole stream has likely missed Earth. Magnetometers took the first shot on the jaw like what, that's all you got? But repeated smaller proton density fluctuations cut at the electrons after midnight UTC and a minor geomagnetic storm is in progress. Interestingly, the tech maps that were out when we wanted to check for anomalies near certain occurrences are now back on, but the archives are still missing the ones we wanted. Solar flaring, at least it's constant, constantly weak for this solar maximum. Sunspot group got about four makeovers as it crossed so far and I see little more than umbral decay and weakening magnetic interaction. These big decaying relics will usually pop one or two as they decay and leave the disk, but I do believe our chances for major flaring are fading with the active regions. Not that you need active regions to have fun on the sun. Yesterday's filament highlighted at the end of the video did indeed pop. The center disk eruption would almost certainly be an earth directed CME, but hey, we like to check the data. First, NASA judges this to be a small to moderate eruption and headed right at Earth. Earth being the little yellow dot here, so you can indeed see an impact as expected. In Space Weather 102 last night, we saw the stereo confirming ejecta had left our star. Today we look for halo eruptions on Soho, Lasco. That's material ejected in all directions. It's faint, but undoubtedly a halo eruption. Should get to Earth about the time those red marked coronal holes on the left swing in to face Earth from the umbral opening. You can probably see their darkness intruding over the left side of the AIA-211. Got shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. SliceofSciFi.com. All right, a few things out on the horizon just to uh, close the show out. So yes, once again, we gaze into the sci fi future, into the sci fi crystal ball. <laughs> That's it. To bring you stories like these. <laughs> Marvel Comics editor Steve Wacker has been hinting about having a Guardians of the Galaxy animated series. Megan, oh. what do you think? Uh, as yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I don't, I don't know. I've been reading the. Um, sorry, I'm trying to do video. And, there we go. I've been reading the comic book, and it's it's okay. Uh, Under, I think, I'm not too happy with the new reboot, but it's not bad, so well, it might be okay. exciting. It is. There's been some talk as to whether or not it may be a fun thing. Now, he did discuss the potential project at a Disney XD Writer Summit and again mentioned it in a recent issue of the comic. A movie adaptation of, Gar of Guardians of the Galaxy is slated to be in theaters on August 1st, 2014. So maybe the movie, it might be the starting yeah. point for the series. Mm -hmm. it could, it Should could be it be greenlit? We just have to kind of wait and see how that goes. It could be good. Now, director Guillermo. Guillermo del Toro has announced that Charlie Kaufman will be adapting Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Ooh, Five for him. That sounds awesome. Wow, that's that's Holy heavy. Yeah. Kaufman wrote Being John Malkovich, Eternal Sunshine <laughs> of the Spotless Mind, and Adaptation. And well, del that's definitely in the right. It's the right vein. Yeah. There. It's the right vein. <laughs> yeah. And del Toro believes that both he and Kaufman have come up with a perfect way to adapt this book. Wow. So mm. I think we just got to wait and see. That should be interesting. It, it could be really interesting. And there, now there's also going to be an upcoming fifth Terminator movie. It is going to be a reboot. We've and talked it, about we've this. We've talked yeah. about this a bit. It is going to kick off a whole new Terminator trilogy. And Arnold, no Arnold, right? Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger will have a role in the film, but his exact role has yet to be determined. And Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> The Rock, oh, is that could also, be good. Now, yes, is also in talks to join the new franchise. 
The new Ooh. film is simply called Terminator. It already has a release date set for 2015. So interesting. So that's what we got for that for there. And so tune in next week for more slice from slice of sci-fi from the horizon news. So fresh and wrinkling my precious. <laughs> Well, very cool. And with that, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Of course, you can follow us on the Twitters. You can follow us on the Facebooks. Um, check out SliceSciFi.com, SliceSciFi.tv. Um, really cool stuff happening up on Facebook right now. Um, a lot of your comments and so forth that are coming Showing in. Up there, in right video, away. We're actually going to throw them up there right away. So keep following the Facebook page, and you may actually see your uh Use your the comments. app. Use the app because it gets it there instantly. 